lift our hands this morning. Come on, let's reach out to God this morning. Be in our presence today. God, we come as a body of believers, oh God, believing that you will be in our midst. God, that you will touch every need that is in this place today. That you will heal every infirmity that is in this place today. That you will loose every chain that is in this place today. That you deliver every individual that needs to be delivered in this place today. God, we know by your power, God, that you have all authority and all control is in your hand. That's why we've come here to worship you. We've come yes, here Lord. to praise you. Yes, we've come Lord. here to give you the glory that is rightfully yours. And now, God, as you move in the midst of your people, touch where only you can touch. Move where only you can move. And heal where only you can heal. God, we thank you for deliverance this morning. God, we thank you, oh God, for setting us free. But most of all, God, we thank you for your spirit. And let your presence dwell among us today as we come to glory Father, thy name. God, let your spirit saturate this place. Let your spirit permeate between each and every hour. God, that it would reach into the depths of our soul and our heart, so God, and it would loose us from the concerns of this life, that we would recognize that you are already victorious, and because of you, God, we are also victorious. And God, now we're going to praise you for the victory. We're going to praise you for the deliverance. We're going to praise you for the healing, because we consider it done already. In yeah. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give our God a hand clap of praise. Can somebody give Jesus a shout of praise this morning? I've come in with an expectation and knowing a God that can do all things, not just some things. to sing on to the Lord this morning. Remember these altars are open. Whatever you have need of, we'll pray. Amen. I do covet your prayers this morning. My wife is home with three sick children. Pray specifically for Gideon and Abigail. They are fighting a virus, and unfortunately, it's activating Gideon's asthma. So please be praying. We know a God that is a healer. Amen. We know a God that can do all things. Amen. Let's continue to sing on to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. 
walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall but you had never failed me No, in the battles won Waiting for change to come Lord, you have never failed me Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me I know the night won't last your will will come to pass my heart will sing your praise again Jesus you're still enough keep me within your love my heart will sing your praise again your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Where there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. Bring your move. You move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you. All things, but you cannot lie, you cannot fail. Amen. And I put my trust in a God that can do that. All things. He is capable. Amen. I sense that our minds are all over the place this morning. We're thinking about what is in front of us. We're thinking about what has just happened. Those are two things you can't control, but you can control right now. Amen. It's your present that you can control, and it's what we do with the now that matters. There's nothing you could do about the past, not getting into my message yet, and there's nothing you could do about the future. It's right now. Amen. And God wants nothing more than to interact with you this morning. And some of you have brought so much to the sanctuary, and God wants to relieve you of that. Some of you are struggling in our minds, we're struggling in our hearts. We're struggling in our emotions. And this is the place that is the remedy. He is the remedy to every circumstance. Can we just let it go? Can we put our minds into subjection and just focus on him and see your God work? You have done all you can in your capability. Now let your God work. Can we close our eyes and lift our hands? We need to get our minds on the Lord this morning. Satan loves our silence. Satan loves our fear and our anxiety. But whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed. And God wants to provide a breakthrough here this morning if we would just put our minds to subjection and put our minds on him. I think on these things, what is good, what is pure, what is lovely, my testimony, and a good report. And this is what we need this morning. Oh, God, I pray, oh, Lord, that you help us with our minds. Help us to think on you, God. Lord, help us to meditate on our testimonies and our memorials because they demonstrate your capability and your wonders. 
God, remind us, God, that who you set free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there truly is liberty. Help us, oh God, to begin to relinquish that burden. Help us, oh God, to begin to relinquish that pain and that stronghold in our life to you, oh God. Help us to bestow it upon you and trust you, God. Lord, help your church this morning in Jesus' name. God is waiting. God is waiting. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Your precious Lord. I've tasted. Shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the air.
This morning is your presence. God, invade this house. God, you are welcome here at all times, Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue to sing on to the Lord. These altars are open. Whatever you have need of, we will pray. Amen.
Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Make me a house of prayer always. Lord, don't let the fire go out in my life. Let it be as the menorah that was required to burn perpetually. Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. You may be seated. So good to see our visitors here this morning at New Life Apostolic Church. Make sure you fill out a visitor card, and if you didn't get a chance to fill out a visitor card, there's a QR code in the foyer for you to scan. Sign it up, and you would get our newsletter and a welcome letter for us. So good to have you this morning. Amen. Our bishop is currently at a revival, and he will be returning tonight, so we need to be praying for him this morning. I know that he is tired in body, and we need to be uh, praying for traveling mercies for our bishop. Amen. As stated earlier, please, I covet your prayers for my children. That is where my wife uh, currently is. They are fighting, unfortunately, a virus. Amen. But God is a healer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Tease the season. And you know how the, the old adage is, sharing is caring, especially amongst all your children. When one gets it, they seem to all get it. Yeah. Amen. It's the gift that just keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Brother Hillman to come and give our Sunday morning tithe and half shekel offering. And our announcements. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Let's do that again. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Praise God. Amen. We're here in a new month. Praise the Lord. And starting off with this month, we're going to have on Saturday... February 11th, a wedding that's going to be conducted here at 2 p.m. And all is welcome. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to play a big part in that ceremony. So um, and I'm nervous, scared, and excited at the same time. Amen. Yeah. So I hope somebody with some type of medical background will be sitting up here in the front but as soon as the pastor said I now announce you man and wife I may collapse so uh, I hope somebody with some medical experience be up here to help me out praise the Lord amen but all is welcome come next Saturday at 2 p.m. amen also this month Friday February 17th for those you have children that's under 10 uh, years old. Amen. It's going to be a parent's night off. Praise the Lord. It will be someone to take care of your children while we you going to have a parent's night off. And that's going to be conducted at 530 through 730. And it's for kids under 10. So you have children under 10. Hey. Yes. Those two will be Pastor Brown and his assistant. Praise the Lord. Sister Brown, they will be watching your children if you would like to have that time. Amen. And we're going to ask some uh, youth to help us out, and we'll be getting with you. But we just wanted, as the pastoral family, to give parents an opportunity just to have the night. So we'll be in the educational building next door. We'll be doing activities with them. And that will give parents just an opportunity to get the much-needed relief. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And come on the 24th through the 25th of February, that be that Friday and that Saturday, it's going to be Texas Ladies Conference. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be conducted here starting Friday, the 25th at 10 a.m. in the morning. Praise the Lord for all you sisters. Amen. Please attend that meeting. Amen. Uh, ladies Conference, 24th through the 25th starts at 10 a.m. Friday morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Also, 
on Sunday, February 26th. We're going to uh, do something here for those that's 50 and up. Praise God. We're going to have a good time of fellowship, a good meal. Amen. All those that would like to participate in that, that's 50 and up, will we'll be bringing $20 with you. Praise the Lord. $20 a piece for those that like to come, that's uh, 50 and up, because we plan on having a good meal and good time of fellowship. And, of course, you come as a couple, you'll be paying, uh, paying $40. Amen. If you come as a couple, praise the Lord, $20 a piece. And that's going to be Sunday, February 26th at 1.30 p.m. here at this church. Amen. So for those of you who like to participate in that, please come. It's basically for the 50 and up. So uh, we apologize if you can't um, come to have that type of fellowship. <laughs> but um, down the road, you will be keep 50. Yes. Amen. So you just keep living. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So at the time, that's all the announcements. Does anyone else have any announcements yes. that they would like to share? Uh, go ahead, Elder. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any other uh, more announcements? Yes. Um, back to the ladies' conference weekend on Friday and Saturday. I know that's ladies' conference for ladies. However, there is a rally on that Saturday around 1230. That's for everyone. So, brothers, you, you don't have the Saturday off. Uh, please show up at 1230. Praise the Lord. We're a body of believers, both male and female, because those are the only two genders God made. Oh, <laughs> sorry. That's right. <laughs> sorry. I, I kind of derailed a little bit there. But anyway, please come. Uh, we'll be glad to have you. Also, I want to personally thank everyone who was able to give towards our special gift for Bishop and Sister White. If you wanted to give but you forgot to give or didn't have it at the time, and now the Lord has blessed you, I'm just speaking it because uh, Jesus said I would have whatsoever I say. So um, if you did not have the opportunity and the Lord has made a way for you to give something, there is no set dollar amount. You do what you can do. Um, but please see me. We like to wrap this up by the end of February so that we can present this to Bishop and, sisters, uh, Bishop and Sister White. Praise the Lord. And we're so appreciative for what they have done and how they've given and served and loved on us at our worst mm -hmm. and loved on us at our best and everything in between. So please make sure, see me, um, zell me, cap, cash at me, do whatever you have to do so that we can um, close this out the end of February. Amen, amen. Can you say praise the Lord? All right. All right, praise God. I hear that, amen. power hour, those four, age, age four through eight. Brother Hellman, I, I'm hearing this rumor that something happened Samuel, what happened yesterday? Oh, okay. I think it was your birthday, correct? Yes, it was. Okay. All right. Happy birthday. Yeah. I'm so glad you were standing for that. <laughs> Amen. Don't forget Power Hour, ages four to eight. Amen. Tithe and half shekel, a Lord loves a chill forgiver. Amen. Good to see everyone. Make sure we say hi to our visitors this morning as well. Our ensemble may be seated. Amen. I love that with the tithe. Wait, wait, I don't want to miss out. Amen. From the heart of a child. 
So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I give honor to the Lord my God. I give honor to our bishop. And once again, we need to be praying for him and his traveling mercies. I'm praying that he'll be here tonight in a decent time and he can get some rest from his long journey. Amen. Uh, this has been a message that's been on my heart and anybody that's had the opportunity to preach. It's one of those, those messages you cannot get away from. It's those messages as you're meditating on it, thinking on it. It's very thought-provoking, very introspective. It's one of those where you cannot escape, and it is in the forefront of your mind. You wake up to it. You go to bed in it. You think about it at work. You think about it with your time in the family. Spent the morning trying to just put it together in a way and, and trust God that I'm able to convey this because I truly believe that this is a struggle for many human beings in today's world, but not only that, it is very detrimental to the church of the living God. Amen. And it is something that we could easily slip into if we are not careful, but God gives a remedy here this morning in his word. Amen. If you feel comfortable in doing so, can we stand to our feet? I'm going to be going to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, very familiar scripture. And sometimes we just need to be reminded. I mean, I could have this on the walls in my room. I could have this written on my laptop. I could have it framed in my house. But if I'm not reading it, absorbing it, and consuming it, and placing it in the tablets of my heart, I forget. If we are not careful, it becomes consumable, meaning that we forget about it. You don't use it, you lose it. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. And that should just be the end of the message, but we have to emphasize it here this morning. God has not given us the spirit of fear. That's absolute. I believe in the infallible word of God that what he says it is, God has not given us, bequeathed to us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a That means a mind that's in control because it's ingrained with God. And this is a struggle for our society. Dare I say it is a struggle for the apostolic world. And I pray that we can identify some things here this morning and allow God to change. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, I'd like to preach this particular thought, the pitfalls of fear. We know that a pitfall is a trap, it's a, it's a pit, it's a giant hole, and it's something if we are not situationally aware of, we can slip into, and it can be incredibly difficult to escape. It could be Satan that places the trap in front of us, we cannot be ignorant to the devil's devices. It can be our own flesh that set up these pitfalls. It can be the struggles of life. But it is what we do with these pitfalls that matter. We have to be situationally aware to the pitfalls of fear. Dare I submit this to you this morning, that fear is one of the most devastating forces in the apostolic world today. And I don't just mean a phobia like I'm afraid of water or the deep sea or spiders. I hate spiders. I'm not a big fan of the deep sea, giant squids. Enough said. But I'm talking fear is tiered, meaning it has levels. It has strata. It has layers of things. And if we are not careful, we slip into the pitfall of fear. It is one of the most detrimental forces to a child of God because it is the killer of faith. It steals our joy. It steals our peace. Fear steals our worship. Fear steals our praise. Fear steals our capability and growth in God. And if we are not careful, we run out of the sustenance that was our testimonies. We run out of the sustenance that what we were holding on to and it becomes consumable. And now we are stuck in the pitfall of fear. Amen. Looking at today, this society is absolutely inundated with fear and anxiety. I have talked to so many peers and colleagues that everyone says that they have anxiety. They have 
fear. You see it on the news stations. You read about it in the paper. You see it on social media. You see it online where it is anxiety and fear. It is inundating our society. A generation of Generation Zers, Generation Xers, Millennials, whatever group we are, we are in a world where people are fighting anxiety and depression and fear like no other. I have never seen so many online ads for online therapists. I have never seen so many online ads for counselors. You are full of anxiety. You are full of fear. You are full of depression. Talk to someone. And there are times for that. I am not taking that away. But if we are not careful, that becomes a dependency. Where God is the one that gets us through these things. I have never seen so many ads online for antidepressants, uppers, downers, and there are necessity at times. But if we are not careful, that becomes the dependency. I have, not ta I have never talked to so many people that are my colleagues. I, I have anxiety medication, and I understand, got it, but that shouldn't be the dependency when God is there. What is going on today is what they talked about in the end times, what Jesus was saying, that the, men, the hearts of men or mankind shall fail them. That's a willingness to live, a willingness of substance. Who they are as a person fails them because of what they see and what they encounter. And it says in Matthew 24 that what we are going through now is just the beginning of sorrows. And if we are not careful, if it slips into true tribulation, we'll be destroyed because we fell into the pitfall of fear. God did not give us, can we, somebody mind turning on that display, please, in the back. God did not give the spirit of fear, but it is alive and well in the church of God. Fear destroys us. Fear is devastating to revival to the individual apostolic fear and anxiety. What you, to get that breakthrough, to get that breakthrough, to get that breakthrough, it's not going to be on the medicine. If you need it, I understand. I'm not taking that away. There are times for it. Absolutely. I believe in science and medicine. But it can't be a full dependency. That pure joy and peace comes from the Holy Ghost. Amen. There was a book that I attempted to read in high school. It was just too long, and, and I didn't want to read 1,500 pages. But there is one statement that was in this book, and it said that fear is the mind killer. That still sticks with me, and I would agree with that statement. In the pretense of that statement in the book where it said fear is the mind killer, meaning that all rational thought is lost in the saturation of fear. All reasonable thought process is lost in the, ra in the saturation of fear. Amen. I would agree with that. Loss of reason, loss of rational thought. And if we are not careful, fear can be debilitating. I'm not going to move from this spot because of fear. God has ingrained in the mammal species, in the human species, that fight or that flight reaction. We know that in animals, an animal either fights for survival, runs away, or freezes in place. And if we are not careful, we do the same thing as apostolics. Some kind of external force comes in and tries to strike fear in our heart. We either fight, but it's not spiritual. The flesh rises up in that fight. We either try to run away because of fear, and God doesn't want us to run away because he didn't give you the spirit of fear. Or we freeze in place and go nowhere. We become stagnant. We become lukewarm. And that fear has paralyzed us and gripped us. And you know it is true. Fear is a devastating force to the church of the living God. Amen. 
The great Roman emperor, Marcus Aurelius, stated this. Can somebody restart the screen for me in the back, please? Or otherwise, we're going to lose these displays. Thank you. If you are distressed by anything external, that means outside of your capability, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimation of it. And this you have the power to revoke at any moment. What was Marcus Aurelius saying? Is that it is our reaction to the problem. It's not the problem alone that destroys us, but it's how we handle the circumstance. There's the external situations that I cannot control. I have no control of outside of me. I can't do anything outside of me. But God lives in the uncontrollable. God's power is in the uncontrollable. Amen. So I think about sickness. I can put all my preventative measures in there. But if I get sick, that's above me. But I cannot be so debilitated by the fear of sickness that I begin to crumble. God is a healer. God is a great and wise physician. I can't control that. And we saw that in these last three years with the pandemic. Yes, there was a time of caution. There was a time of seriousness. But unfortunately, it slid individuals into the place where it was debilitating. They would wrap themselves in bubble wrap. They would wear a mask driving down the road at 95 miles an hour. I don't know what the top speed of coronavirus was, but it wasn't that fast. Where they didn't even want to leave their house. I, there's even interviews going around today. Man, I missed the lockdowns. If we are not careful, fear Cripples, cripples us to some, uh, some degree where we lose our relationships. Amen. Fear of people. People are going to be people. God has given them sovereignty of free choice. People are going to make their own decisions. I can't control them. I am going to interact with individuals that are bitter. And this goes for all of us with anybody we may interact. I'm going to respond to individuals that are unhappy, that project their anger on others. We are going to deal with people that may be vile, disrespectful, but people are going to do what people do. Criminals are going to do what criminals do. But it's what I do as an apostolic on interacting with those people. Amen. God tells me to pray for my enemies. God tells me I've got to pray for them that despitefully use me. I've got to pray for them, and I've got to love them, but I can't allow the choices of individuals to debilitate me to such a point that my anxiety cripples my action in God. Amen. It means that if I... I have to lead by example. I've got to mentor. I've got to teach. I've got to be the best technologist I can in the district. And that means I've got to be the best parent I can. Amen. Not a hands-off approach, but the best parent I can. All these roles that God has chosen me to be, amen. I've got to do everything in my ability, but I can't allow people to debilitate me. Amen. I think this is one of the biggest ones, is fear of change. I have known individuals my whole life, fear of change creates the fear of failure. They, they are so afraid of change, they won't better themselves. Academically, occupationally. But I've seen people forfeit their entire walk with God because of change. They fear change. One thing that God has established in his creation is the cycles and processes of change. This world changes. God does not. Amen. The weather changes, climate changes, populations change, food supplies changes, water sources change. But God doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I've known individuals that have left 
churches because of change. The preaching didn't change. The Spirit of God falling didn't change. The doctrine didn't change. If the doctrine changes, it's okay to roll out and go find a church of doctrine. But the doctrine didn't change. The preaching didn't change. The Spirit of God moving didn't change. It's because it is a fear of change. And we see a biblical example of the children of Israel that God demonstrated their te- the ten plagues against their enemy. God freed them from the taskmaster. But three days later, they started complaining and griping to Moses because they had a fear of change. I don't like change, so I'm going to walk away from the church. I don't like change, so I'm going to complain about the manna that God supplied. I don't like change, so I'm going to complain about the water that literally came from rock. Fear of change is devastating. People have forfeited their whole walk with God because of the fear of change. God has said that things are going to change. There's different dispensations on how he has dealt with mankind, but he is still the same. And don't allow the fear of change hinder you from where God wants to take you in the change. Amen. We cannot control our past. And you can't control the future. All you can control is you. Right here and right now. But some of us are still living in our past. And that past has given you a fear of change. That past is ruling us, some of us here this morning. You can't do anything about it. But if you put it under the blood of Jesus, all things are made new. Amen. Old things have passed away, hence all things are made new. God controls the external of you. You don't. I can't control what the government is doing. I can't control what society is doing. I can't control people. All I can do is do what God has instructed me to do in my own eternal and individual responsibility. But I cannot allow the external to hinder me from what God wants. God controls the external and God controls the uncontrollable. That's where his miracle signs and wonders are. But what devastates an apostolic is when a circumstance comes, they get so devastated and controlled by fear. But God did not give you the spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. Don't let fear debilitate you. Amen. Can somebody here this morning, my Bible scholars, How many times is the statement, fear not, in the Bible? I'm going to take a drink of water and let you think about that. Nobody Google it. I'm glad they didn't watch. Fear not is in the Bible 365 times. That is one for every day of the year. God has emphasized for you to fear not in all things. Amen. As we're coming to focus, Sister Erica, you get a gold star. See me after service. But God wants you to fear not, for he is with you. Can I get Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. It says, be anxious for nothing. Don't fear anything. That anxiety. But it's still proactive. Giving everything in prayer and supplication. If we are not careful, we say, God, I'm going to wait on you, but that waiting is actually a verb. I'm waiting on him. I'm serving him. I've got to continue to pray. It may be external. It may be outside of my capability, but I've still got to have prayer and supplication and thanksgiving and all my requests, and then the fear will dissolve. 
But I can't just say, God, you've got it alone, and there's no prayer, there's no proactivity. And if we are not careful, if we are not careful, we become, we become complacent. And fear begins to seep in. Once again, don't let fear throw you in the pitfall. Amen. I need Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 28. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Amen. God supplies all our needs. By the way, if I grew a cubic, I will be seven feet, nine inches, because a cubit was a foot and a half. Amen. So that's just a, a little thing. Thank goodness I'm not that tall. I'd be hitting my head everywhere. But what he is saying that I supply all your needs. Doesn't all these animals, do I not supply for them? Are we like that flower, it doesn't toil, it doesn't panic, it doesn't have fear, it doesn't have anxiety, because it knows that it is provided for. God supplies all our needs, and that is where that trust and faith and the dissolving of fear happens. I'm not saying that worry doesn't happen, but that worry begins to germinate and grow and populate into fear, and then that fear becomes debilitating, and that fear begins to consume our faith and our trust and our hope. And that joy that's unspeakable, that fear begins to stagnate us, and we don't grow any further in God because we are consumed by that fear. But God says, I supply all of your needs. Take no thought for your life. I've got clothes on my back. We've got a beautiful sanctuary. I ate this morning. Amen. I am breathing. Amen. God supplies all my needs. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Take no thought of your life. God will supply all of your needs. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him. All. All. Not some. All. Not what I choose. All. I'm not going to be picky and choosy like some use scripture, just one verse, mm -hmm. and then it's an entire doctrine. Mm -hmm. All of my cares on him. For even he, if it's uncomfortable, even if it requires ripping off a Band-Aid because it allows you to heal and consume that fear, cast all of your care upon him. Why? For he careth for you. He careth for me. He careth for you. Amen. 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 Because he is the God of the unknown. He is the God of uncertainty, meaning that outside of my ability, that's where he operates. When I decrease, he increases. In my vulnerability, he is ever stronger. When I trust him, that's when he operates. Amen? Amen. Amen. Marcus Aurelius, I really like these quotes, by the way, because there's so much spiritual application to it. Forget it, everything else. Keep hold of this alone and remember it. Each one of us lives only now. A brief instant. The rest has lived already, meaning you have lived this many years of your life. It's been lived. You can't do anything about it. God makes all things new. Our sins, our transgressions, he throws as far as the east is from the west when we repent. Amen. For a God of forgiveness. Or... The impossible is to see, talking about your future. We're not promised tomorrow. What do we do now? Fear keeps us from the altar. Fear keeps us from repentance. Fear keeps us from submission. Fear keeps us from revival if we are not careful. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, with corresponds with this quote. Take, therefore, no thought for the morrow. Don't take a thought for tomorrow because all you have is today. For, for tomorrow, go ahead, I'm sorry. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. I will deal with tomorrow when tomorrow comes. All I can do with is now. 
because otherwise it is mind-blowing and we become overwhelmed. Yes, we have our calendars planned. Yes, we have all the things in our schedule or these tasks that we have to do. But all I can worry about, all I can focus on is my life with Jesus now. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Tomorrow is going to bring its problems. <laughs> all I can do with is today's problems, but there's things outside my capability. Those things outside my capability is where God operates. Amen. I need John chapter 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But it's going to be roses and lilies and tulips, and there's going to be rainbows and sparkles, right? What does he say? In the world, ye shall have tribulation. We are going to go through difficult times, but it's what we do with it. But be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. I need Romans chapter 8, verse 28, please. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Did you say all things? I did. Does that mean the good and the bad? Yes. Does that mean the blessings and the tribulations? Yes. Does that mean that all things, loss, does that work for the good of them that love God? Betrayal, does that work to the good of them that love him? Because watch God work in the background. Heartache, things transpiring, sickness, whatever it may be. Does that mean all things, Sister Eva? All things. I want you to hear that again. Why did it happen? Because all things, not just the good things, but all things work together for the good of them that love him. That's that trust in my God with all my heart. And leaning on, on my own understanding, but in all my ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct my path. We sing that song, Waymaker. It's great lyrics, man. We, we are jamming. But it, it is true. Even though I don't see it, he's still working. And I think that the scripture is forgotten at times. It's a consumable. All things. You meaning when everybody is trash talking me because of my faith, all things. I mean, if I'm the only one in my family living for God, all things. I, I've got to trust him. You mean that, that sting of loss? All things. Just trust him. Don't let fear consume you. Amen. Isaiah 26 and 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Amen. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. We've got to keep our mind on the Lord and not on the situation. I only could do what I can do, and everything else is up to God. Amen. We try to do everything in our capability, and we get burnt out. And then we get bitter. We get frustrated. But we've got to trust him. Amen. And I hope we're listening this morning. Psalms 27 and 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Amen. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? If he, he's the strength of my life, like the joy of the Lord is my strength, like when I'm utterly defeated, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Psalms 23, 1 through 6, very familiar scripture. Go ahead, Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even in the shadow of death, I'm to not have fear because he's with me. Amen. Amen. Even in the shadow of death, he is with me. Amen. Isaiah 41 and 10. We're going to end this morning with this particular scripture. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. 
Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear not. That's one of those 365 times that he says it. Fear not, for I am with thee, and be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and I will strengthen thee. Some of us this morning, fear has gripped us in one form or another. As I said, it's a tear. It's not a phobia. It's just a fear of something. Fear grips us. Uncertainty. Loneliness births fear. But God never leaves you nor forsakes you. Don't let the fear of the entire list that we talked about hinder you from a breakthrough. Don't let the things that swirl around in your mind that's above your capability, give it to God. He said, come on to me, those that are burdened and heavy laden, and I shall give thee rest. But too many times we hold on to the fear as if it was a personalized backpack. We hold on to the fear as if it was some kind of friend. We hold on to the fear as if it's some kind of companion. We hold on to the fear as if it's going to answer my problems. When Jesus is sitting here saying, just come on to me, those that are burdened and heavy laden. Many of us here this morning, you are fighting fear in one form or fashion. And I know that we may be tired this morning. We're coming off a week of ice. But don't let your mind wander when God wants you to relinquish it here. That fear, if you are not careful, will consume you. I have been there when I've allowed a fear of something to consume me. But I realized that I only could do what I can do. And God has asked me, has instructed me to do what I can, and that's trust him. To be his disciple, but trust him in the external. Can we stand to our feet this morning? Can we close our eyes and lift our hands? Oh, God, help us. We have struggled with fear for so long. It has become captivating. God, it has consumed me, and I do not know how to give it away. God, help us to have that discipline of giving you our fear. And God, it may take time, but God, this morning... We are asking for the strength to relinquish just a little bit of this fear and this uncertainty. Oh, God of Jacob, I ask, oh, God, that the peace that passes all understanding fall on this church this morning. Oh, God, fall on your sons and your daughters. Let this fear that has become so debilitating and hindering, God, begin to be relinquished here this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. These altars are open. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. We will see you tonight at 6 p.m.